I just used this automation that you see here in front of me to generate around 1700 leads for dentist practices in the UK. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to do that step by step. If you just want to get this workflow and skip that part, you will find a link to it in the description below. Now let's get started. So let's now have a look at how this system works step by step. So I'm going to start by executing this. And now let's go and have a look at the first step here, which is our list of queries. So this is our list of queries here. I'm going to expand this to all of our queries. So I have 54 items here. So it's basically 54 queries. And these are for dentists in cities of England. And yeah, one thing to keep in mind here is that if you're going to uh, query a city or area which has which the name exists in multiple regions around the world, you might want to specify that by just adding for example, here, if this is England, I would say dentist in Bradford, England. If it's in, uh, let's say it's uh, city, city is Los Angeles, you would say Los Angeles, California, uh, referencing the upper area, which is the state or the country and so on. I don't need that here. I don't think these exist anywhere else than England. So this should be good enough in this case. And you see also that we use plain language here, just dentist in Bradford. That works very well with Google Places API. Okay. So that's the first step. So I have a list of 54 queries. We're going to loop over those. And for each query, we are going to execute this here on the right side. So this node will execute the workflow here on the right side. And here I'm also adding a delay between each ex execution. It says one second here, but I'm actually going to increase this because I ran into some issues. So I'm going to increase this to five just to be on the safe side. And the thing is that even though you might not run into issues with the uh, Google Places API, even though you might not run into limits with the Google Places API, the Google Sheet here, the Google Sheet API actually also has limits per minute, how many writes you can do. So if all of these executions here finish in parallel and you all want to write to the Google Sheet at the same time, you will get error at the, er errors at the Google Sheet. So for that reason, I am adding a delay here of five seconds that you just saw. All right, now let me clean this and run this again. And now if you go click on the executions tab, you will see these are the executions running here. Now let's have a look at the HTTP request node here. So this is the first step we will receive here on the left side. We will receive our query as an input. We can't see this now. We can see that later in the executions tab. But what happens here is we're going to use this URL here for the API and our credentials here that we have set up our API key. And then we will here, you have the value for this Google field mask here. You define what kind of data you want to extract from the API. Then let's scroll down here below. And here we will take our query from the query variable and use that as a value here for this text query parameter. So it knows what our query is. And down here we have added pagination because the Google Places API will give you a limit of around 20 results. That's the upper limit you get for one request. But let's say we request now, uh, we send a request for dentist in London. That's a very big city. There's probably hundreds of dentists. You will still just get 20 results. So how do we solve that? We add pagination here and that way it will paginate through the different pages. So for each page, we'll get a limit of 20 results, but it will go through multiple pages. But what I found was that even when you use pagination, you will maximum get three pages. So just keep that in mind. So if you want to uh, generate leads for an area, which is rather large, like London, you probably better off splitting that city into smaller areas like East London, South London, West London, things like that, or the names, like say New York, Manhattan, etc., and uh, add each one area as a query in your list of queries. Okay. So now that I mentioned that, let's go out from this node. So after we have sent the request to the Google Places API and now receive data, it will be split out here at the split out node here at the set fields node. Let's open this up here. We will just select which fields we want from the data we received. And here we will filter out. You see here we will get this field business status. So we want to make sure that the business is operational. 
In that case, it will have this value operational. So we'll filter out all businesses that are not operational, that are closed basically or not running. So we don't want to contact those. And then down here, we're going to check if the website or the, yeah, basically if it has a website, if the uh, result has a website uh, URL, if it, if it does, we're going to scrape that here using this HTTP request node. We're going to make a request to the URL and get the page as HTML. And then we're going to merge all the other fields with that new data field we receive here in the merge node. And after that here, we're going to check if we actually received HTML data because sometimes the uh, request might fail and sometimes you might just not receive uh, what you expected. So we're going to check that if we receive the HTML data, then we're going to do the actual scraping. And here is the node that handles that. So here we use a regular expression to handle the scraping, this one here above. And this is for scraping emails. So it will scrape the web page we received, the home page of the business. And then it will get all the emails. And then we will use a set data structure here to get only unique emails. So we have no duplication. And then we will store those. And at the next step here, we have another node that is going to clean the emails because some emails are just garbage. They might exist on the in the HTML of the website, but they're not really business emails. So here you can add those. If you notice something that pops up often for you, you can add that here into this regular expression by adding a pipe character like this, like this one here, and then add the uh, keyword that you that you expect to exist in that email that you don't want to have here. All right. And after cleaning away those, we should now have emails for all the uh, businesses that have websites and we will merge those together here with the other items and then here we will clean the output because we will also have received uh, fields called data which includes the html and error fields which you, we do not want we have no need of those here in the future so we're going to clean those and here at the next and last step we're going to merge these scraped uh, items or these businesses for which we scraped emails together with those here that did not have a website URL. So we're going to finally merge all of these together here. And then at the last step here, if we open this up at the last step here, we are going to add this to our Google sheet here. So the business name, address, opening hours, rating website, URL, and phone numbers. And now let's go and have a look at our sheet. It has been working now for a while and you see we have started getting some results. So if you have a look at these results now, you see that we have the name, you got the address, you got the opening hours, you got the rating and the website URL uh, and the phone number here on the right side. All of these columns here are from the Google Faces API, the official Google Faces API. So the rating here is by Google. Uh, I think it has based this rating on reviews all around the internet. So that's the rating if you want to know the rating before you contact the business and then you got the url and then we have the emails here which is the custom uh part of the workflow that handled scraping these emails the google places api do not provide emails whatsoever so you have to scrape those yourselves like i did here and here you can see the different emails for each business now one thing to keep in mind here is that not all businesses will give you emails because some just don't have the emails on their website unfortunately so you won't get emails for all businesses and for some businesses you see here you get plenty of emails they got like this business here seems to have uh different branches all around the city so you got uh, different branches and you got different uh, departments reception info etc so yeah that can happen as well so i see here and it is still generating we have reached a few hundred here i think yeah so we have now reached 121 uh business leads here or entries let's go back to the workflow and it is still running here you can see it's still running now let's go and have a look at some of these executions that just finished and you can see they are also finishing here in front of us you see when some of them pops up it means it finished so let's have a look at this one for example so here is the finished execution now by looking at the execution here in the executions tab we can see all the data and we can see these things we didn't see before so if you open this up 
we can see that this was for the query dentist in Litchfield and open the HTTP request node here. And we can see that on the left side, you see that's a query. And on the right side here, you see the information. So for this uh, query here, we got, if you close this, collapse this, we got one item actually. So either it didn't do any pagination or there was actually not that much data in Litchfield, not that many dentists. So if you open this up, we can, if you click on this places here, you see, yeah, we only received nine items here. So basically nine dentist practices. And so we didn't do any pagination probably because they probably weren't that many. So that might be the answer here. Okay. And then we will go over the usual, usual path here that I showed you before. And at the end here at the Google sheet node, you can see here before that we have this merge node and you see the final data here. So if you collapse this, we have nine items in total. And each item here is one result. So one business basically. So we got nine businesses here for uh, the query of Litchfield, right? Litchfield, yeah. So we got nine businesses in total and then it stored it here into the Google Sheet node. So here's the data that got stored and so on. So you can go and you can check all the different executions here on the left side one by one and see the inputs and outputs of every execution. I'm going to let it keep running here and then we're going to have a look at the final output when it has finished executing. Now, while it's still working here, let's, uh, let me show you something else that's important. Now, if you go over to the web page here at maps, billing, pricing, developersgoogle.com slash maps, billing, pricing, uh, slash pricing, this here, it will show you uh, your free usage and what it costs to use the API every month. Now, there's a free usage cap for the API depending on what kind of data you extract. So there are three levels. You got the essential levels here for the Google Faces API, then you got the pro level, and then you got the enterprise level. What these levels basically mean is if you go and look at this page here, this page over here, here it tells you what kind of data you can extract at each level. So the first level here, the essentials will only give you these four faces, attributions, ID and name. So for each business, it will only give you like an ID and the next page token. This is what we use for pagination. So basically it's totally useless. You can't do much with it at the next level here, text pro search, you will have a little bit more data, like the address, for example, the display name, which is basically the name of the business, postal code, things like that. But we will not get the website address, nor do we get emails. And since we're looking for emails and phone numbers, we're looking for contact information, we have to use the enterprise level here. And at the enterprise level, we can get the phone number and we can get opening hours and the website URI. This is what we need here to scrape the emails because the Google Places API do not provide emails. We have to scrape them ourselves. So if you go back to the other page here, you see that for the essentials, we have a free usage cap every month of around 10,000. No, this is for geolocation, but if you look at the places here, essentials, we got unlimited here for the ID only, but for the other essentials level, we get 10,000 events every month. Now, I'm not 100% sure about this, but I'm saying now, but I think an event is equal to one request, according to my experience and my research, there's no like clear I haven't seen any clear documentation explaining this. What's the difference between an event and a request? But it seems that an event is equal to one request. So you can think about this probably as 10,000 requests to their servers per month for the essentials level. For the pro level, you got 5,000. And for the enterprise level here, you got 1,000, right? So you can think about it this way. If you go back to the, the workflow here, the HTTP request node, uh, it will make for each query, it will make a minimum of one request. So if you don't have pagination, it will be one request and you get around 20 items for that. If you do use pagination here, like I'm doing here, then you will get up to three uh, pages per query. So three requests per query. So if you have, in this case, like you see here, uh, 54 queries, that will amount to 54 times three. So that's around uh, 100 and what's it? 62, 162 total requests. 
and at each request you could get up to 20 entries depending on which area and how many uh, entries exist there for your query so you could get around 150 times 20 so maybe somewhere around let's say 1500 and 3000 results for only 54 requests and you have 1000 requests per month for free so there seems that you can get plenty of requests or uh, plenty of results a few thousand results at least per month for free using the google places api now let's go back and have a look at or before that let's see how far we've come in the process here and it seems that all executions have finished so let's go and look at the google sheet now the final google sheet here and let's see here how many we got all right i now reached the bottom here and here on the right left side you see we got a hundred or one thousand seven hundred and seven three dentist practices in england this is not the uh this is not the upper limit you can get you can actually get much more if you want to dig deeper and split up larger cities and smaller areas but i just used a simple example here so we got 1773 dentists and we did that with only 54 queries which i according to my calculations it should be around uh 160 something requests which gave us all of these results so it was pretty accurate 1700 and i think i said between 1500 and 3000 you could expect so yeah and we got this completely for free now if we go here and look at my uh, metrics here my billing account you see we have for the places api here i have 522 requests and before when i looked here i had around 340 so that was kind of exact it's 160 requests here they have counted for me and here's my billing account when you create your billing account for the first time you will get 300 dollars of free credit i have not yet used those i don't know if it's updated late or something but they have not yet used those and probably it's because i'm still inside the free tier for using the free monthly tier as i said a thousand requests so that's the reason they have not started taking anything from the trial credits and if we go back here you see i have 500 requests here now i've used this before these are just for today i think i ended up with around 500 yesterday as well so yeah but it seems that you can get around a thousand requests for free uh, every month and the first time you create your account you'll get 300 dollars of credit so even if you exceed the limit it will take those from the free credits so you can try it out and confirm that what i'm saying is right so this is how you can generate leads with the google places api now if you'd like to skip setting up credentials and things like that check out this video above where i show you how you can generate unlimited amounts of free leads using the overpass api which is an open and free api that doesn't require any kind of credential setup so that you can use basically forever so check that out definitely if that's what you're interested in if you want to get this workflow down in the description below there's a link where you can join my community where you find this workflow together with all my other resources as well as exclusive support if you ever need help with anything with that said thanks for watching and until next time take care